there, welcome to Homekeepers. I decided to join you today from the kitchen with Stephanie. Hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. And we really have an interesting program for you because Pastor Dave Williams from Lansing, Michigan has done quite a paper on the subject of yoga. And a lot of people think it's just an exercise, but he really got into the history of it and all. And so listen with an open mind, okay? Uh, so glad to have him back. He's one of my favorite guests of all time. And this is my favorite sidekick right here. And tell them what we're going to fix. We are making sweet potato muffins. And I'm not a fan of sweet potatoes. I think everyone knows that. But I tasted this batter and it's delicious. So I can't wait to try the muffins. I tasted the batter too. Yeah, and if we you just, add brown just... sugar and you add just yummy stuff, then yeah. sweet potatoes are going to taste better. No. <laughs> but you know, if, if our viewers keep like a Thanksgiving file mm -hmm. or a Christmas mm -hmm. file, you, you might this want to put this in. For sure, a Thanksgiving for your, file. You know, your sweet potato thing. I mean, it could thing. be all, all year, but this mm -hmm. is definitely a Thanksgiving yeah. file. So you have flour, mm -hmm. walnuts, and the amounts will come up on the end. There's way too many yeah. ingredients. Yeah. Okay, Or you can get a the lot of ingredients free. on this. So you have flour, walnuts, raisins, brown sugar, baking powder, ground cinnamon, salt, baking soda, and ground nutmeg. You're mixing all that so together. So we know for it's good. So good. I have um, sweet, fresh sweet potato that you cooked up yesterday, not even out of the can. No, these are the real thing. Yes, sweet potato, and I have uh, two eggs that were beat up, that we beat up. I have a stick of butter, so it's healthy melted. I have a teaspoon and a half of vanilla and three quarter cups milk. And this recipe says 24 but on this one Stephanie said let's try 18 because they came out a little small. Yeah they did it didn't raise up as, rise up as much as I thought it was going to be do it so we're going to do 18. Now can, while we're mixing I just want to say something okay. All right. Gotten a few letters saying maybe I'm not very nice to Arsene Rippy. Please understand, oh. we're friends, and, <laughs> and this is what we joke, and it's and it's funny to us. She has never oh. taken offense at one thing I've I ever said. I promise you, oh, and I, I not her. So, please just know we're just friends. That's all, okay? Uh, and maybe just a, we have a tad of the same sense of humor. It, yes, very yes. similar. Which is hyster I'm hysterical. Okay, Time. let me just tell you, I'm funny. She's funny. We get together and. It's dangerous. And a okay, tad, that's all. A tad of satire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. I, I like laughing. I like funny. So, and I, a, I'm feeling very important right now because I usually have to do only one thing on the show. Yeah, she's doing two. And I'm expanding my horizons. Yes. She went there. You go. The dry ingredients and she's spraying. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's twelve. If you want to do those, we'll do eighteen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So you simply mix it all up. Put it in the sprayed pan and cook it at uh, 400 degrees for 15 minutes. Super simple. And you know, when we can tell you uh, 18 might be better than 24. Yeah, because, because 20, you'll see there's a lot of things we tell you along the way because we've done it. Yeah, I just thought they would rise up more. So mm -hmm. if you want to bring those over so we can t do a taste test. Mm -hmm. And they are kind of small. I think she's right yeah. about that. So it could be portion control muffins if you want, or mm -hmm. just eat more of them. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we tasted, I could have taken that batter up to my office this morning with a cup of tea. It and absolutely just surprised batter. me how yeah. good it was. Yeah. Uh-huh. I want to try. You know, they are so, and they're not real sweet. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like a pumpkin muffin. Because mm -hmm. those different the nutmeg, pumpkin. Mm -hmm. the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. It's so good. I tell you, it really is good. Mm. And you can have that recipe. See, my mom told me, don't talk when you have food. You can have the mouth. recipe for free. Mm -hmm. Tell Yeah, them. okay, so you can email Wanda. You can send in a self-addressed stamped envelope, and we'll get it right out mm -hmm. to you. The ingredients come up on the screen at the end, so if you have a the remote where you can just pause, mm -hmm. you can just pause and write it all down. And it's got a, a ton of walnuts in it. It's, it, so it's just great. So... If you want it, that, that information is coming up on your screen. And then if you haven't met him before, he's been on with me before, and I just love him to death and his wife, then um, you're going to enjoy Pastor Dave Williams and 
talking about yoga. <laughs> <laughs> People have a lot of different opinions on it. Mm -hmm. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Welcome back to Homekeepers. Pastor Thank you, Arthur. Great to be back with back, you. Don't we? we do go right, way back. We served on a board together. You helped us dedicate <laughs> Gilead Healing Center in Lansing, Michigan, and you were such a blessing to our people. My first uh, impression of Mount Hope is just right there because when you drove this kind of a long driveway, if I remember right, to the church buildings lined with flags of different countries that you supported. You, great missionary church, wasn't it? Yes. It is still. And, and that's why we had the flags, to keep people reminded yes. of our purpose, evangelism. Mm -hmm. Well, I bring a lot of missionaries on this show because I want my viewers to know what's going on around the world. And there's a lot of good things going on around the world in the message of the kingdom. Amen. And one of the greatest things is the revival in Iran. Yes, I, I see that on the internet. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, Jesus said this gospel will be preached to all nations. To all nations. Yeah. And uh, there's great revivals going on, more so really than in the United States. But some of the things we're going through right now might provoke a revival, if you know what I mean. Well, that's our prayer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, there's always a spiritual an attitudinal and a practical side of everything and uh, we can do all the practical things but if our attitude is wrong yeah. and we're not handling the spiritual things mm -hmm. uh, we, we're not nearly as effective. Now Dave Williams has done a big paper on yoga and I'll be honest with you I'm an exerciser I, I never have gotten into yoga but uh, my normal Outlook probably would be, well, it's just exercise. So what? But when I was in Bible college, a missionary, David Coston, I don't know if you remember him. I remember him in that class telling the evils of yoga. His father was a missionary in India, right? Yes. Yes. I, I have him in my new book. Oh, really? Yes. Excuse us while we kind of catch up here. Yeah. <laughs> But I will never, he taught at CBC then. Yes. And uh, I, I'll never forget, it just gave me this big question mark about, so uh, what got you interested in yoga? Because I can't really see you doing those kind of exercises. Well, when you say <laughs> what got you interested in yoga, it sounds like I'm a yogi. Yeah, yeah but, right. You know, Mary Jo and I were uh, spending time in Florida. We love to walk. We walk around the island and we saw a yoga studio here yoga ad there, another yoga ad there, and then we walked by a church, and the church was advertising yoga lessons. And I thought, well, isn't that something, a church having yoga lessons? Well, it sort of piqued our interest, and I was preaching in Michigan, Good Friday, so I flew back to Michigan just for two days. I saw a guy I recognized, but didn't see his wife, who was in the worship ministry, he said, hey, where's your wife? I didn't see her. And he said, oh, she's up learning how to be a Christian yoga teacher. Mm -hmm. And my first thought, honestly, Arthleen, was this. Oh, maybe we're going to be reaching the new age people. Maybe this is a, a yeah. tool that God will use. And so I started, stu but I, I always had a funny feeling about it. And uh, your viewers watching, if they have somebody that is doing yoga, I do yoga, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you might have had a funny feeling about it. That's important to listen to because that is discernment from the Lord. And so I started studying on yoga. The last 24 months, I began to study about yoga, Christian yoga, holy yoga, Yahweh yoga, <laughs> Jesus yoga, hot yoga, uh, goat yoga. I've interviewed those who were once yoga teachers that came to Jesus Christ and immediately began renouncing yoga. And I ended up with a writing a book 
called Yoga Craze in the Last Days, mm -hmm. why are so many trading their God-given destiny for a counterfeit? And I've got 380 references in that book to show people my discovery on the roots of yoga and what yoga really is. Well, the roots are absolutely demonic. Yes, people think it's a human... I, I knew that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you know that. But uh, the exercise, I set that aside. Yeah, most people do, mm -hmm. and that's what I did too. I thought it was mostly stretching exercises for women, and I thought it's good if you don't do the Hindu meditations yeah. and the, uh, the, the breathing, you know, all the mm -hmm. things they do, and meditations. And, uh, but I was wrong. Mm -hmm. The, the poses, Dr. Laurent Willis, 22 years in the New Age and a yoga teacher, when she came to Jesus Christ, she began to tell people that yoga poses are poses to demonic gods. Paul says they're demons. They're not mm -hmm. gods, little g. They are little g gods. Mm -hmm. And the... Th Three main gods in yoga, uh, Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma, they call it the trimuravate, a trimuravate of gods. It's a counterfeit to the Trinity. Whoa. And the, the, the uh, article you read about the Kundalini spirit mm -hmm. entering our American churches, it's not just denominational churches, but Evangelical churches, charismatic churches, Pentecostal churches. And what is that? The, the kundalini, kundalini spirit. Well, that's, that is, uh, many apologists and discerners call the kundalini spirit the counterfeit Holy Spirit. Because when people are doing their, their yoga poses, especially in the Christian yoga brands, they believe they're having an encounter with God. In fact, the Christian yoga teachers say you can connect with God through yoga, that yoga is a spiritual discipline just like prayer, meditation, and fasting. Well, it's spiritual, all right, but spiritual doesn't mean biblical. Yeah, spiritual I mean, can mean a lot of things. Demons are spiritual. Yeah. So the kundalini spirit is the counterfeit Holy Spirit. It, it gets a hook in people. And it's very real. I, I remember that professor, when he talked about that, was that uh, people who would go and they get in these poses and things, there, there would be something going on, a high or something. Now, you said something here that makes a lot of sense, and that is you wouldn't talk about a Christian Ouija board or Christian astrology, but we make this with the very roots that are absolutely demonic, we try to put a Christian brand on that. How can you amalgamate, mix, two different world views, two different religious views, and combine them into a religious practice? It's impossible. And I've read the Christian teachers, I read their books, I watched their videos, mm -hmm. and they have a syncretistic theology where they take this ancient practice that goes way back before Hinduism. In fact, if you looked at the Canaanite religion, it looked almost identical to the Hindu religion today when God told his people, mm -hmm. do not practice mm -hmm. those things that the people practice in the nations I'm giving you. And every time they did, destruction came. Mm -hmm. Every time they thought, well, let's mix a little bit of their practices in with our worship of God. Yeah, what could that hurt? What mm -hmm. could that hurt? Well, the northern kingdom, the Assyrians, boom. Mm -hmm. The southern kingdom, 114 years later, boom. The Babylonians took them into captivity. I might say, too, there's some major pastors who really agree with you. Oh, yeah. Mark, uh, J uh, John Lindell preached a message in Springfield to his beautiful congregation, a loving message warning them about the dangers of yoga. What happened? 
the next day in the newspaper. <laughs> he's ignorant. He's uh, divisive. He, you know, all, all these mm -hmm. peace-loving people mm -hmm. begin calling him names because it has been ingrained. Yeah. People almost think it's mm -hmm. a good exercise. Well, um, this is, and let me say, you have uh, put together great research, this paper right here. And you can have this. We're going to put a specific website up uh, that you can go to that uh, page and you can have this for free, right? Just Absolutely download free. It. I wrote it especially for pastors, mm -hmm. parents, teachers, leaders, and your viewers. Mm -hmm. And they can download it absolutely free. It's what I call the position paper on yoga. And there's a lot of scriptures in there. A lot of them. When I got this, I was... I was really, really impressed with all the work you had done on it. Congratulations. But uh, we'll leave that up, and you just go to that website, and you'll see that uh, place where you can absolutely download it. And uh, because we can't really get to the real detail, you know, in, in a television interview. Um, Christian yoga was not popularized by a Christian, rather a Hindu. Yes. That was one smart Hindu, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, in the hippie movement. Uh, a guy named Paramahansa Yogananda, the founder of the Self-Realization Fellowship. Now remember, Hindus believe that yoga will bring you into a connection with a god. Uh, they also, branches, believe that God is within you and you can have an awakening and become the God you were intended to be. Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, Yogananda, Par Paramahansa Yogananda, wrote a book on Jesus and yoga. And Arthelene, what a if you ever read that book, that was the beginning of Christian yoga. It was a Hindu that promoted it in America. He's called today the father of Western yoga. Well, it's awfully, uh, it's, it's awfully popular. Um, what about people who say there's no spiritual difference between Hindu yoga and Christian yoga? Um, people who would say that, they would just say that, you know, it's just an exercise routine. Well, we have to understand yoga is not just an exercise. Yoga is a spiritual discipline designed to honor demon gods. Mm -hmm. And so if a Christian uses yoga, why, why do they, where in the Bible does it ever give yoga as a way to connect with God? In fact, I think it's almost blasphemy because we only connect with God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who lived a sinless life, died on the cross, rose from the dead, right. ascended to heaven, is coming again. And to say we can connect with God through yoga is an insult, really, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I, I want to read a portion from, from this paper, which let me mention again, you can get it from that website. The actual physical poses of yoga have serious occult implications and seem to trigger certain types of demonic reactions. The practitioners misunderstood to be some kind of spiritual awakening. That's kind of what my professor said. Yes, it's, it's called a kundalini awakening. And interestingly enough, there are groups of these New Age people and Hindus that believe there will be a collective awakening if enough people can get into the yoga practice, if they can begin doing the poses and postures in yoga, there will be a collective awakening, a collective kundalini awakening. Now here's what's interesting. There's a new book out that talks about Germany in the 1920s. In the 1920s, in Germany, yoga became a craze. There were 60 books published in Berlin alone on yoga. Whoa. Every corner, there was another yoga studio opening up. They had no idea what par portals they were opening into the spirit realm in their country. Adolf Hitler was fascinated with Hinduism. In fact, the swastika was stolen from the Hindu religion. Himmler was a yogi, the designer of the final solution to 
eliminate all the Jewish people in Europe was a yogi. He carried a yoga book with him everywhere. He recommended that the death squad leaders, right. they were all nervous, that, to do yoga to settle their nerves. Now, is that a coincidence that after yoga became such a craze in, your, in, in Germany in the 1920s, 1933, they elect an antichrist, they did. Adolf Hitler. They did. They did. And look what happened. I believe, and this is just my belief, that Germany had a collective kundalini awakening, which always leads to delusion. Mm -hmm. First deception, yoga is a deception, then you stick with it, you go into delusion, and you'll notice the people, even in Christian yoga, their culture changes. Something changes yeah. about them. And then d d deception, delusion, and then destruction. Think it's any accident then that America is inundated with yoga? You know, not a good sign. I don't want to be a conspiracy mm -hmm. theorist at all. No, and I he's not. I know no, him. I'm not. But uh, Satan is Satan. He mm -hmm. is the deceiver, the accuser, and the tempter. Uh, he's tempting people to do things that are off limits. Mm -hmm. And he actually, you know, this Christian yoga, people think they're worshiping Jesus, but Paul talk to the Corinthians who thought they were worshiping Jesus, thought they were hearing from the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, and he said, it's another Jesus. And you see people wearing these shirts, Jesus is my guru. Uh, but Oh, that gives me chills. Well, if he's, <laughs> if he's, if he's a guru, he's not the Jesus not of Jesus. the Bible. Right. And some of them, Arthelene, are even saying that Jesus, when he was 18 years old, went to India, learned to do yoga from the yoga masters and came back and secretly taught it to his disciples. Mm -hmm. Now, does that sound like the Jesus you and I know? No, not at all. And you know what? There's probably a lot of people right now scratching their heads listening to this. But I want to tip the scales for Jesus. I do too. I don't want to try to balance this with this with this. I want to go his way, all the way. In every detail possible. Right. Yeah. And they say it, it, um, yoga is not bad because it predates Hinduism. Well, what makes it any safer if it predated Hinduism? And, and it's true. I read the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali that was adopted as one-sixth of the Hindu um, tenets of faith, mm -hmm. the tenets of their religion. It was... It was uh, translated by a Harvard professor. It was the hardest read I've ever done. But there's no question. Yoga began as a sorcery practice, a sorcery practice. Demon power. Demon power. Mm -hmm. No question about it. You only have to read the Yoga Sutras, which the Christian teachers mm -hmm. teach the eight limbs of yoga by Patanjali. The, the, it's impossible to have such a thing as Christian yoga no more possible Doesn't to have exist. Christian witches. <laughs> right. We are out of time. I hope you got that uh, website where you can get this uh, paper that he... And let me hear from you about this. And I'll send them to him, okay? <laughs> Stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Okay, friend, let me remind you, we are viewer-supported, and I want to thank you for all you've done for Homekeepers through the years. And uh, the Holy Spirit is kind of impressing you to give to this program. I hope you will follow up on that. The address is on the screen, Homekeepers Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And the phone number, 800-229-0059. Well, I think the pastor gave us a lot to think about today. And I'm anxious to hear your feedback on it. I think it's very important that we really make a decision to really follow Jesus all the way 
and uh, it will really pay off in great, great dividends. But I was thinking of the problems we are facing right now and things that, uh, for me, a great-grandmother have never really seen in America before. Th this virus is uh, brand new uh, to me and the way it's affecting the nation. And uh, it, it could it actually could bring the nation down economically and all that. But um, I think that we need to think about the bigger picture because we're living in the end times. And I think that's one reason things like yoga uh, is really uh, growing by leaps and bounds. We're, we're living in the last days. And anybody that doesn't really believe that probably hasn't look, taken a real good look at the Bible and what it has to say uh, about the end times because perilous times will come, the Bible says. And I think about my viewers and some of you, maybe your grandmothers and you kind of drifted away from church a long time ago and you didn't have your kids in there and, and the grandchildren don't even know what the church looks like inside. And I think that what we're going through now makes people sit and think a little bit about their life and about eternity and what could happen. And maybe, you know, you went to Sunday school when you were real little and you remember some of those stories and some of those scriptures. And strangely, when we go through dark times, those things come back as reminders. We want to remind you that Jesus never left you. You might have left him, but he never left you. And I, I was thinking of a song by Mosey Lister. And it, I know it goes to the, right to the heart of a lot of people right now. It goes, how long has it been since you talked with the Lord and told him your heart's hidden secrets? How long since you prayed? How long since you stayed on your knees till the light shone through? How long has it been since your mind felt at ease? How long since your heart knew no burden? Can you call him your friend? How long has it been since you knew that he cared for you? There's never been a time when we needed any more that relationship with God because you know what it brings? It brings security. It brings a belief that he's still totally and completely in control. He loves you without limits. And he wants you with him forever. Think about it, my friend. And I hope you will join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.